If you remove the pigment of a melanoma spot, it doesn't remove the cancer. That cancer can still progress and spread. Having melasma is having the rubber band in its native state. That is its most comfortable, easiest state to be in. Treating your melasma is like stretching the rubber band. And stretching the rubber band requires effort. So for patients, it's investment of time, money, and treatments to get their skin clear. However, when you discontinue treatment, the melasma tends to want to rebound or go back to its native state. So now in this video, I want to go a little bit more into the three conditions I mentioned in the first part of the video, namely solar lentigos, melasma, and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Hello everyone, welcome back to Fundamentals with Dr. Adobe Obasi. I'm a physician scientist, board certified in dermatology and dermatopathology. In our previous video, I introduced the concept of sun worsening brown spots on the skin. By discussing the skin structure, as well as a little bit of photobiology, which is discussion of light energy. So we talked about the different layers of the skin, the epidermis, the dermis, and the fat, as well as the different layers of the epidermis, also known as strata. So we talked about the basal layer or the stratum basale, all the way up to the stratum corneum, which is the final stage of maturation. We also talked about different specialized cells in the basal layer called the melanocytes that make pigment and how that pigment is distributed throughout the skin. There are two types of melanin pigment, which are the pigments made by the melanocytes. Specifically, there's theomelanin, which is reddish orange, and then there's eumelanin, which is brown black. The blend of these two melanin products in any individual is what determines their skin tone and their ability to either tan or burn when they're out in the sun. I introduced the Fitzpatrick skin types ranging from one to six, one being always burns, fairest skin, light eyes, whether um, green or blue, and red hair usually, or blonde. And then the skin type six, which tend to be darker skin, and they never burn. Next, we talked about the ultraviolet spectrum and the visible light spectrum, which are the areas of the sun rays that are pertinent to brown spots um, on the skin. Ultraviolet light, there are three main types, A, B, and C. While the visible light spectrum has the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, or as I learned in the mnemonic, Roy G. Biff. So these two spectrum of light can impact the skin and cause both positive changes as well as negative changes. On the positive side, specifically ultraviolet light can trigger vitamin D formation as well as anti-inflammation effects. So we use that in treating certain conditions like psoriasis, eczema, and vitiligo, and we can talk about those in future videos. But uh, ultraviolet light can be used to help those conditions. While on the other hand, the negative impact is that it can trigger skin cancer formation through DNA damage, it can accelerate skin aging, and it can cause sunburns. So now in this video, I want to go a little bit more into the three conditions I mentioned in the first part of the video, namely solar lentigos, melasma, and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Solar lentigos, also known as H spots, liver spots, even though the liver has nothing to do with this, are very common, especially in fair skin types. These spots occur on sun-exposed areas on the face, you know, the cheeks, the forehead, in the scalp if patients are bald, um, and also commonly at the back of the hands and on the forearms. They can also occur on the back, the chest, the legs, um, in any area that is sun-exposed. Lentigos tend to be discrete spots 
that are light brown to tan in these sun exposed areas and they can be of different shapes in every individual they tend to have one particular color with very few variations however there are malignant forms of these sunspots called lentigo maligna this is actually a type of skin cancer called melanoma where abnormal cells have been triggered in these spots and you would start to notice them changing, either getting darker, creating more, multiple colors within them, um, and spreading. So it's very important before treating sunspots to consult with a dermatologist to evaluate them using tools like dermoscopy, which I can discuss later. It's just a magnifying lighted um, instrument that we use to see more profound structures in the skin, as well as with biopsies if needed to make sure that any given spot, sunspot is not or in, on the path to becoming melanoma or have already become melanoma. Because if you remove the pigment of a melanoma spot, it doesn't remove the cancer. That cancer can still progress and spread. There are different treatments for solo lentigos or the plural of solo lentigenes. Um, that includes the bleaching agents, skin brightening agents, lasers, chemical peels, and the most important thing, the use of mineral sunscreen. That is a very common theme in all the conditions that I'm going to discuss today. And the second condition is called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This is a condition of brown spots or patches occurring after an insult of inflammation of the, on the skin. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation can occur after psoriasis, eczema, burns, scratches, acne, lots of different things that injure the skin or inflame the skin can heal and then leave brown stains or brown spots or patches. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation can get better over time in a lot of patients, but to accelerate their resolution and improve their appearance, Agents like bleaching creams, lasers, chemical pills, and as I mentioned for the solo lentigenes, can help um, improve the appearance of these brown patches or spots. The key thing is treating as early as possible when you have these inflammation conditions such as eczema, and psoriasis, and acne, and being proactive in preventing trauma to the skin from burns and scratches. In post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, what happens is that inflammation or that injury of the skin affects the basal layer, which as I mentioned before, is where the melanocytes are and where the melanin is produced and distributed. So what happens is the pigment or the melanin drops out of these structures and land in the second layer of skin called the dermis and the super superficial aspect of it. So what happens is the melanin drops off of their position into the superficial aspect of the dermis and then the immune system attempts to clean them up using specialized cells called macrophages. Macro means big, phages means eating. So these are big cells that gobble or eat things up. They are used to gobble up or clean up infections, clean up um, inflammation, debris, clean up dead cells, clean up a lot of things in the body and so they're very useful however they also go and clean up the pigment but it stays in them for a little bit and stays in the skin for a little bit and that's when we have the stain which eventually gets better the final condition that i want to talk about is melasma melasma is actually a very complex condition that tends to affect darker skinned females it is a combination of the effect of the immune system, so inflammation, genetics, hormones especially, and of course, sun exposure. Because melasma has multiple different features that contribute to it occurring, treatment can be challenging and frustrating for both patients and dermatologists because this condition tends to want to rebound. So think of a rubber band, something like this. So melasma, Having melasma is having the rubber band in its native state. That is its most comfortable, easiest state to be in. Treating your melasma is like stretching the rubber band. And stretching the rubber band requires effort. 
So for patients, it's investment of time, money, and treatments to get their skin clear. However, when you discontinue treatment, the melasma tends to want to rebound or go back to its native state. So it's important to work with your dermatologist to come up with a treatment plan that includes both a treatment phase of your melasma and a maintenance phase of your melasma treatment. Very key in the treatment plan for melasma is blocking the sun, as well as using medications such as bleaching creams, skin lightening creams, laser devices, chemical peels. There are lots of treatments that we use to try to get that clearance of the skin. Melasma, when it occurs in pregnancy, which is because of the hormonal changes in pregnancy, is called the mask of pregnancy because it tends to affect the cheeks, the bridge of the nose, as well as the forehead, so it looks like a mask. But it can occur from other hormonal changes, such as with use of birth control pills, with stopping the use of hormonal medications, and as I mentioned before, sun exposure, but also visible light exposure, such as the light bulbs from interiors of buildings can flare melasma. So I recommend patients always apply their sunscreen and reapply even though they're indoors. So melasma is a difficult condition to treat, as I mentioned earlier, because it has to do with multiple different contributors to the cause of melasma, such as genetics, sun exposure, hormones, and inflammation. So it's very important to consult a dermatologist to address this condition. As I mentioned earlier, sun protection is critical in the management of all three of these features. So in my next video, I'm going to discuss sunscreens. There are two different types of sunscreens, the physical blockers and the chemical um, sunscreens. I tend to prefer the physical sunscreens for a lot of these pigmentation disorders because they block the, and reflect the sun rays. Any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen in all of these condi skin conditions. So please find a formulation that works for you. It can be a foam, a powder, a cream, which is the most ideal. Sprays, don't use them in the wrong setting. It's most important to use a creamy sunscreen first, and then you can supplement to reapply with whatever works for your current situation. If you have makeup on, maybe the mineral powdered tinted sunscreens work well for the reapplication. So I'll go over all of this in the next video. I'll also be going over bleaching creams and how they can help with pigmentation disorders. So I hope you have a better understanding for these three common pigmentation issues on the skin. I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments section below. Please share your thoughts as well as your comments regarding the three conditions I mentioned, sunscreen, and just pigmentation disorders in general. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell as well as the like button, and share these videos with your loved ones and colleagues and friends so they can better understand how to care for their skin and what happens when things go wrong. I hope you have a wonderful day, and God bless you. You're all fundamentally awesome. Bye-bye.